Hey, this is Waylon from Swiftwood Bows. Welcome to part five of my board bow build along. In the last video, we got the bow bending out to 50 pounds at 20 inches. And in this video, I'm gonna take the bow all the way out to full draw. Before I do that final tillering, there's a few things that I wanna to do to the bow just to make sure that it's ready to do all that bending. First, I wanna sand the back of the bow with some 150 grit sandpaper. Uh, make sure that the corners are all rounded over nicely and there's no little splinters that might want to pop up on us. I also want to get the handle shaped down to its final dimension so that I don't cause any surprises in the tillering if I wait till the last minute and do that. And on a similar note, I want to get the tips shaped and this outer limb area down to the final dimensions that I want it so that it doesn't cause any surprises later on in the process. All right, I'm gonna sand up the back here just to take out any little nicks or blemishes or whatever, just to make sure that this back is good and smooth. I'm using 150 grit. Next, I want to reduce this handle down to its final dimensions. So there's a lot of subjectivity that goes into the handle. The most important um, features from a, a practical standpoint is that, like I described before, that the bow is not bending through this um, stiff handle because of our riser. But other than that, um, it's really about how it looks and how it feels. And that can be up to the person that's shooting the bow to a large degree. Um, some people like really deep risers, they like contoured, you know, pistol grips, they like cut in shelves. Um, some people like really simple, smaller handles. Um, it's really up to you. I'm going to go for uh, a smaller, simpler um, handle without a lot of contours and just kind of a basic, comfortable shape. When I reduce my handles, I like to do it gradually from all different angles so that I can kind of bring it all in together at once instead of you know getting this dimension exactly where I want it and then trying to get this dimension exactly where I want it because um, then you can end up chasing symmetry until you don't have anything left for a handle but if it all kind of comes in together I feel like I have more control over it anyway. So what I've done so far is to mostly just kind of take off all the harsh edges, round things over, get things so they feel a little bit more comfortable, and then I'm just going to start to reduce the dimensions to be where I like them, how it feels comfortable for me. Um, I really like both the handle areas and the tip areas because as long as you're keeping the primary function of those areas in mind and not compromising the, the durability of them, you have a lot of license to customize these areas in a way that you don't really have with the limbs because the limbs are under so much strain, they really need to just be following kind of the functional rules of, of what they need to do to make a strong bow. But in the handle and the tips, we have a little bit more creative license. So take advantage of that. I've gotten my handle to a good point. I like the way that it looks. I like the way that it feels. I might do a little bit more tinkering with it as I go on, but for now, 
Um, I think it's going to be just fine. Anything that I do from it from this point on isn't really going to change the tiller at all. Just wanted to make a couple quick notes about handles. On this bow, I'm going to keep things simple, and I'm going to be shooting off the back of my hand as opposed to using an arrow rest or a shelf. If you've never tried that before, I recommend giving it a try. I really like shooting off my hand. Um, it's comfortable, it's simple. Um, if you have your knock point in the right place on your string, the arrow never really touches your hand when you shoot, so you don't have to worry about um, getting cut. Um, if you really feel comfortable having an arrow rest, that's fine. Here's a video that I've done on how to add an arrow rest to the side of a handle. Um, you could follow the directions on there and put an arrow rest on the side of your handle quite easily. If you're interested in having a cut in... So what I'm going to do first is kind of bring this down into a, a, a point on the width profile. Shelf, you're going to have to um, look elsewhere for a good video on that. That's not really been my style of, of bow making. So the next thing that I want to do is to finalize the shape of my tips out here. Um, right now they're kind of chunky and blocky. Um, I'm going to make them look slim and trim. So at this point, if you haven't already, you need to decide um, what's going to be your top limb and what's going to be your bottom limb. Because at least for the style of tips that I like to do, my top limb, I like to have long and sleek and pointy because it looks nice. And my bottom tip, I like to have rounded and blunt just because it's more likely to come in contact with the ground. So I like to have it be a little sturdier. So I'm going to make this my top tip. And as long as I'm retaining the basic functionality of these string grooves, I'm not really going to mess with the string grooves very much. I might end up deepening them a little bit as I narrow up the tip some. But really, as long as I keep the shape and functionality of these string grooves, everything else that I do to this tip is cosmetic. From a functional standpoint, I don't have to do anything to this tip. I'm only doing this because I want to change the way it looks. Everything out past the string grooves is purely cosmetic. It doesn't affect the functionality of the bow unless somehow you have a ton of extra mass out there. Once I get a basic shape like this established on the side profile, I'm going to come here on the belly and I'm going to slope this down into a nice point. up my rough tool marks here with a finer file. <laughs> now because I took some off the sides, my string grooves are fairly shallow, I still have plenty of room here in the middle of intact back that I haven't cut through, so I'm going to bring my string grooves in just a little bit and deepen them. take some sandpaper here and just clean up the string groove so there's no rough edges. For the bottom tip, I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it kind of round it off and shorter. All right, so here's my finished tips. Here's the top tip. And here's the bottom tip. After getting the handle and the tips shaped up and the back sanded, I'm back on the tillering tree. On the long string, we had it out to 50 pounds at 20 inches. 
from there we felt comfortable getting the bow strung for the first time or braced, analyzed everything that we could from looking at the braced bow. I've tightened the string up so that the bow is at full brace, which means that the distance from the inside of the handle to the string is about six to six and a half inches. And now I'm gonna pull the bow on the tillering tree just a little bit here at full brace. I'm gonna be gentle at first. I'm not gonna crank it all the way out. I'm just looking at how the limbs are flexing, looking for any spots that seem to be flat and not moving at all, or looking for any spots that seem to be bending more than other places and doing too much work. Overall, I think that this looks pretty good. Perhaps a little bit weak in the outer thirds here of this top limb. It's got a little bit more bow to it there than it does anywhere else, but not too bad. See if you can see what I'm seeing. So I'm going to mark that spot and stay out of that area for a little while when I do my scraping. I'm not going to pull it all the way out to 20 inches because I've already seen something that I kind of want to address. The left side, the bottom limb, I think has a nice, even, healthy bend to it. Perhaps it's a little bit stiff in the very outer po portion of the limb. But all in all, I think it looks pretty good. The limbs seem pretty even in terms of how strong they are compared to each other. One trick for monitoring the, comp the relative strength from one side to the other is to take a ruler here at the deepest section and measure. So on this bottom limb, it's about six and three quarters from, from here to the string. And when I put it in the same spot on the other side, on the top limb, it's about six and five eighths. So we would say right now the bow has an eighth of an inch negative tiller. That means that the bottom limb is a little bit weaker than the top limb. I'd like to reverse that. I'd like to have about an eighth of an inch positive tiller. So that means that I'm going to stay out of this area right here on the top limb where I thought it was bending a little bit too much. But overall, this, this top limb needs to get a little bit more wood removal than the bottom limb so that I can have an eighth of an inch positive tiller instead of an eighth of an inch negative tiller. So based on what I saw, I'm probably going to do, I don't know, maybe about 50 scrapes with the scraper in this area, staying out of this outer part. And I'll maybe do 30 scrapes along the whole limb on the bottom. And then I'll check again to see if the relative strength of the two limbs changed so that the top limb is bending a little bit more than the bottom limb, which is my goal. And to see if I can take just a little bit of pressure off of this outer area by leaving it alone. I'm going to put some X's out here in this area that I'd like to leave alone, just to remind myself to avoid it for now. After I did those scrapes, I'm going to put it back on the tree and I'm going to pull it a little bit and see if I can tell a difference in the way it looks. Still haven't even gotten out to that 20 inches that I was at before. There's no reason to go out that far if I'm seeing things that I want to fix in the tiller. So I think I improved the issues that I was seeing before. I'm going to go ahead and take this out to 20 inches and see where we're at for weight. So at 20 inches, I'm at 45 pounds now. So weight-wise, I can go a little further out, as long as I like the tiller that I'm seeing at 20 inches, and I think I do. So at 21 inches, I'm at almost 48 pounds. That's 21 inches. Still liking the way the bow's bending, so I'm going to take it out a little bit further. So there's 22 inches at 50 pounds. 
I never want to hold it at any significant draw length. I take it out there, I pause for just a second so I can take a look at it, and then I let it back down. That's the benefit of this tillering tree, is that it allows us to be a lot easier on our bow. Well, we're deep into our tillering process now, and we don't have very far to go. But this is a time that we need to be careful. So I'm going to give you a couple things to think about and kind of lay out how we're going to progress from here until we get out to full draw. So hopefully at this point, your tiller is looking pretty good. And that's what we're really shooting for, is to get the tiller looking good before we get out to full draw. And when it is looking good at this stage, then all we need to do is do some wood removal sessions where we're just taking even strokes off of each side, counting our strokes, 50 strokes on this side, 50 strokes on this side. We're going to put it back on the tillering tree. We're going to check to see um, how much weight we lost, make sure everything's still looking good, and then go back and remove some more wood. And so in an ideal world, that's what we're doing through this whole stage is just checking to make sure things look good, removing more wood evenly, inching out to our full draw. My goal for my wood removal sessions is to remove enough wood that I gain about an inch of draw length each time I put it up on the tree. So if it's showing 50 pounds at 22 inches, um, I want to remove some wood, check again, and have the tiller still be looking good at 50 pounds at 23 inches, and so on. That gives me a measurable amount of progress without things going too fast and getting out of my control. It allows me to address issues that I see in the tiller and you know kind of keep things under control so that when I get the full draw everything feels perfect to me. But the process at this stage of the tillering can get kind of repetitive. You remove some wood, you check the tiller, you remove some more wood and so on until you get out to full draw. But it's important that you don't get into a hurry. You want that process to be drawn out. You want it to feel kind of slow. You want to be making some progress if when you're removing wood, you're not seeing any noticeable change either in the shape of your tiller or in your draw weight. You're not doing enough work. But you don't want it to go so fast that you lose control because you want to be in control of when that bow gets to full draw and you want everything to be just right. So if you are having issues, if you see hinges, if you see stiff spots, if your limbs are unbalanced, really focus on those things. When you're removing wood, you're only removing wood in places that are gonna help your tiller look better. Don't just start taking wood off all over your bow when you've got problems to deal with. When you deal with those problems, it's gonna drop your draw weight. And so you want to make sure that you're being efficient and you're only solving those problems. And then once everything is looking good, then you can get back to taking even strokes off of the limbs and reducing your draw weight in a methodical way. Make sure you're always following our rules that we have about drawing the bow on the tiller tree. We never draw past a problem that we see. That's number one. If everything's looking good, we never want to draw further than our intended draw weight. We never want to hold the bow at any significant draw length for any amount of time other than you know, a second or two just to check and see how the bend looks. We want to be careful that we're not overstressing our bow during a time where it's still fairly stiff and there might be tiller issues that could cause set. Some things that you want to look for during this process are any splinters lifting on the back of the bow. Make sure that you don't have any music playing or loud sounds happening when you're tillering the bow. You want to hear that tiny little tick if, if, it, if a little splinter lifts up somewhere and you want to stop and you might be able to fix it and address it before it's too late. Um, you want to be looking on the belly for any little hairline fissures or cracks that can form. They'll kind of be a little bit squiggly. They'll be usually at a diagonal to the limb and they're called crystals or frets or compression fractures and that's a sign that either your tiller is wrong and there's a space, a space that's too stressed out or that you have too much moisture in your bow or something went wrong with the design. Um, but in this case it's probably going to be a moisture issue or a tiller issue because we've got a pretty conservative design here um, with this project. 
Um, so keep an eye out for those things. You'll want to pay attention to how much set your bow is taking. Um, let me show you quick how you can measure that. A real easy way to measure set is to lay your bow back down flat on the ground and look at the distance between the floor and the tip. And that is how we measure the set. So just eyeballing mine, I probably have about a half an inch of set right now. So a half an inch of set is, is pretty normal and definitely within the realm of acceptability. Every bow takes a little bit of set. Um, if your bow's taking absolutely no set, you've probably overbuilt your bow and it's probably going to be shooting slow just because it's too big of a bow for um, what you're asking of it. You want your bow to be a little bit stressed out and when a, when a bow gets a little bit stressed out it's going to take a little bit of set. So I'd say anything even out to an inch and a half is probably going to be okay. You're probably not going to notice a big difference in the speed of your shooting. You know, I don't like to have more than an inch, you know, a half an inch at most. I try to keep it minimal. It's something to pay attention to because set can be a really good teacher um, while you're making a bow. If you're getting a lot of set, you need to ask yourself why. You need to ask yourself, where's the set happening? If all of the set is happening here in the inner limbs, then that means that you're not tillering the bow right. It's bending too hard here and this area is getting overstressed and starting to collapse on the belly. If one limb is taking all the set and the other's not, then maybe one limb is too strong and the other is too weak. If the whole bow is taking set evenly along the limbs, then it's either a moisture issue or a design issue. And once again, in this case, um, we know that we're using a safe, comfortable design for the wood that we're using. So it's probably not going to be a design issue. Um, so it's possible even with a kiln dried board, depending on the conditions that it's been stored in, that the moisture content can be too high. So those are all things to pay attention to while you're tillering your bow. I'm going to be going through this process of removing even amounts of wood off of each limb in a measured way, checking on the tiller tree to make sure that I like how everything's looking so I can monitor the draw weight and the draw length. I only have five more inches to go. Right now I'm at 50 pounds at 23 inches. So it's probably only going to take five or six um, more scraping sessions to get out to, to a draw length of 28 inches. I'll show you some progress along the way. If I run into any issues, um, I'll show you what I'm dealing with and, and how I deal with it. Um, but I'm expecting that this is going to be pretty smooth sailing. I, I like the general shape of my, my bow and how it's bending. Um, so I'm mostly going to be focused on just even wood removal, getting out to my draw length. And once I get just a couple inches away, I'm going to start drawing the bow by hand to check the tiller. The tillering tree is great. It gives us a lot of information, but it's not the same as drawing a bow by hand with an arrow and so for me when I'm by myself in my shop I'll just set up a camera on a tripod and take a picture of my bow at full draw and then go back and take a look at that picture and kind of analyze the tiller um, that way because sometimes it can be different than what I see on the tillering tree. I'll still use the tillering tree to measure the draw weight and the draw length to make sure that I'm hitting my, my mark but I'm really going to be assessing my tiller in the last couple inches of, of tillering by watching the bow drawn and drawn by hand. So I've tillered my bow out to 50 pounds at 25 inches. It looks pretty good on the tillering tree. I just wanted to draw it by hand for you here so you could see what that looks like. Got my garage door here as a, as a clear backdrop so there won't be any distraction hopefully for seeing the tiller. Put a rubber band out here on my arrow at 25 inches um, which is 25 inches from the valley of the knock. Um, that way I won't overdraw the bow here while I'm checking the tiller. So let's see what it looks like. Well, I finally got the bow tillered out to 28 inches. I'm happy with how the bend is looking. If you look at the side profile of the bow, can see that it's taken very little set, uh, maybe about a half an inch at most um, when all is said and done. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to string the bow up 
show you what my final tiller looks like. Then we're going to sand it all up. So after multiple sessions of careful scraping, checking the taper with my fingers, checking the tiller, checking the draw weight, I finally got my bow out to 50 pounds. At so for my sanding process, I try to keep sanding as simple as I can. I don't really enjoy the task of it. Um, I appreciate the value of a good good sanding job though. So the first thing that I do is I take my scraper and I go over the whole bow looking for any tool marks, file marks, anything like that and I clean them up with the scraper because the scraper is a lot quicker on some of those deeper marks than sandpaper would be. So once I get all of the visible marks out then I start with 150 grit and I'm gonna do the whole bow really thoroughly with 150 grit. I'm gonna check it in the sunlight, look for any tool marks that I missed, fix those. I'm gonna sh switch to 220 grit, do the whole bow 220 grit, check it in the sunlight, and then I'm going to do a round of 320. And that's as far as I go. It makes for a real smooth finish. I haven't noticed the difference between 320 and a finer grit once the, the finish has been applied to the bow. Once the bow's all sanded up, this would be a good time if you're planning on doing any stain work to stain your bow. I like to use Fibing's leather dye. I'm not going to stain this bow just because I want to keep the project real simple. I'll do future videos on how to do stain work on a bow. But for now I'm going to put some finish on there. And when it comes to finish you've got several options. For this project I'm going to do something pretty simple and easy to access. Um, it's called VHT wheel paint um, clear matte. You can get it at like an auto zone or something like that. It's about eight bucks a can. Um, so it's a real simple way to get a good finish on your bow. It looks nice, um, gives good protection. Most of my bows I put true oil on, which is a gunstock finish. I have another video, you can check it out and it shows the whole process for how I put true oil on a bow if you wanna go that route. Um, there's lots of other options as well. There's wipe on polys and spray on polys and. Um, all sorts of products out there that'll make perfectly fine um, finishes for a bow. So find what works for you. Um, the main things that you're looking for is good uh, moisture protection and it needs to be a flexible finish that's not going to crack when the bow's bending. So for this VHT, it's real simple. You just got to spray it on and it just takes a few minutes to dry. I like to do about three coats on a bow. Just a nice steady It's really stinky stuff, so make sure you do it outside. Well, the true test and reward of finishing any bow is being able to shoot your first arrows through it. So let's rip some arrows through this new bow. Well, I'd call that a success. There's no hand shock. It's got a nice smooth draw, no stacking, and pretty decent arrow speed for a conservative design. I'm pretty happy with it. Well, it's certainly not the only way to make a bow, let alone even a board bow, um, but it's one way that you can get a durable, good shooting, reliable bow out of a simple board. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to talk. Good luck with your own projects and thank you very much for watching my series.